Hi, I'm Andrew with HKN, and today we're going to be doing another signals and systems problem. So very often when we're working with time-varying signals, it'd be nice to analyze their frequency components, what kind of different frequencies make them up. And so for that, we have a Fourier transform. But what happens if we would like to convert back to view our time-varying signal again? For that, we have the inverse Fourier transform, and we're going to be doing an example of how to compute one of those today. The function in the frequency domain is a rectangle function of omega minus 10 over 2 pi. And so I've defined the rectangle function below as the rectangle of omega being 1 between negative 1 half and 1 half and 0 otherwise. So it's just a switch on, switch off function. Now for this above function where we have omega minus 10 over 2 pi, we would then just have to replace this omega in the center here with omega minus 10 over 2 pi. And so to put it back into just being an omega, we multiply by 2 pi on both sides. Well, I guess it's on all three sides this time. So we just get a minus pi to pi. And then add 10 to both sides. And we get back just omega in the middle. So this function is 1 between 10 minus pi and 10 plus pi, and 0 otherwise. So now that we have an idea of what this function is, we can take the inverse Fourier transform of it. This little fancy f is how I denote the Fourier transform, and the negative 1 means inverse. So the inverse Fourier transform of our f of omega can be calculated using the formula 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of your frequency function times e to the j omega t d omega. And so we want to plug in here and evaluate this function. Because it's a step function, and we know that if we integrate 0, we're just going to get 0, the function from negative infinity to positive infinity only exists within these bounds. So we can instead evaluate the integral at these bounds. And in those bounds, we would just be integrating 1, so our f of omega would be 1. So for our purposes for this function, it would be 1 over 2 pi the integral from 10 minus pi to 10 plus pi of e to the j omega t d omega. So I'm going to run over here now a bit. So we have, if we evaluate this, we know that the integral of e to the j omega t d omega is going to equal to 1 over j t e to the j omega t evaluated at those points. So if we plug in for our function, we get 1 over 2 pi times 1 over j t e to the j omega t evaluated from 10 minus pi to 10 plus pi. Now, if we plug in here, I'm going to factor out the 1 over jt because that is a constant with respect to omega. We get 1 over 2 pi jt e to the j t 10 minus pi, one minus out in front because we evaluate the lower one, plus e to the j t 10 plus pi. Now both of these, if we know, we know that if we have a summation or a, or a subtraction in an exponent that it's just two of those uh, functions multiplied by each other. So therefore, each of these 
has an e to the j 10 t in it. So I will factor that out as well. So we have e to the j 10 t over 2 pi j t. And then in here, we have e to the j pi t minus e to the j pi t, but it's negative now from over here because it's a negative pi. And that's what our function, you would think you could stop here, but there's a little more simplification we can do. This function in here is actually a form of the Euler's identity formation of sine. So generally, if we had this over 2j, we would get a sine function. Luckily, we have a 2 and a j over here. So, taking those, we can replace this entire function here with cosine pi t. I think it's sine. It is sine. <laughs> and it's negative. No, it's not. Oh, you're right. That was a bad idea. It is sine pi t. And if you don't understand where that sine came from, review your Euler's identity definitions of sine and cosine. Those are the hyperbolic definitions. So we also know that sine of x over x is how we define our sinc function. So we can rewrite this finally as the sine c, or sinc, of pi t times e to the j 10 t. And so that is the time varying function represented by our original frequency domain function. I hope you guys learned something and have a good day.